Welcome back to Triathlon Train Explained, powered by Training Peaks. Now this week, we are talking race week. And by that, I literally mean that final week of prep leading into a race. Yeah, now this is a really crucial time because you've no doubt spent weeks or even months prepping for the event, but what we do in this week leading into the race can have a really large impact on our performance. Yeah, wouldn't it be a shame to throw all that hard work away due to that final week of prep being an absolute shambles? I have done that in the past, I will admit. But fortunately, I've made that mistake, so hopefully you guys never have to. Yep, so we're heading off to Frankfurt for the European Ironman Championships this week. Now, although we're not racing, we're definitely gonna treat this as a race week and try and share our do's, don'ts, and what you can do to get yourself through the week as best you can. Right then, it's important to remind yourself that in this final week, very little can actually be done to improve your fitness at this late stage. So don't go out doing any panic training or anything crazy in the hope that you're gonna bump that fitness up. However, you can certainly prime your body to make sure that you're arriving feeling fresh and firing on all cylinders for race day. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is tackle this from the point of view of a standard Sunday triathlon race and work back from the Monday of that week right up to race day. Now on that note, I'm sure a lot of you are wanting to know what our thoughts are on a taper. And for those of you that don't know what a taper is, it's essentially a reduction in our training and the days leading into a race with the aim of getting to race day feeling in optimal shape, or at least that's the plan, isn't it? Well, yeah, and there are all sorts of different variations of the taper and different thoughts and processes on it. So we're not gonna get too bogged down in those different methods. However, as a general rule of thumb, it is a general reduction of the volume over the week or during this taper period. However, and it's a big however, we do maintain some level of intensity throughout that. Now, let's say for instance, you're normally training on average 10 to 12 hours per week. During this taper period or during this final week at least, we should probably be looking at somewhere around six to seven hours of total training for the week. Yep, but it isn't all about the taper. So we're also gonna chat about all the other things you need to think about on a day-by-day -day basis. And we're gonna start now on the Monday. Well, this is a really good point to actually check over all the kit that you're going to need for race day. And hopefully you have done this prior to race week, but it's always good to make doubly sure. So if anything needs fixing, replacing or whatever, you've got loads of time to get that sorted. And the bike is a good example of that because there is nothing worse than having last minute bike worries and rushing around bike shops in the last couple of days before a race. So at least by checking over your bike and also its race setup on a Monday, you've got plenty of time to get any last minute issues or worries sorted. Now in terms of the training, a lot of people like to treat Monday almost like a day off, allowing the body to absorb all that hard training that you've been doing and simply recovering, almost like you're hitting the reset button. Now obviously this is entirely personal, some athletes out there actually like to do a similar sort of thing later in the week, which we'll get onto later on. Okay then, Tuesday is an ideal time to get your last quality run session in. And it's universally been known as run day by many athletes. So I suppose it would be rude to break that habit, wouldn't it? But we're not saying you have to go do your last big killer run session or whatever, but just getting a little bit of quality is an excellent idea. Yeah, exactly. So let's say you are used to doing something on the lines of five by 1K at 5K run pace, for example. Come race week, you may want to knock that down a little so you're just doing something simply like three by 1K at the same kind of race pace. Or you could even break it down a little bit further to eight by 400 meters with nice recovery between each. All of which are good sessions, but they're not hopefully going to leave you on your hands and knees, which is fairly important given that we're going into race week. But of course, if you're not used to doing a run session of note, that's totally fine too. If you just run by duration or by distance, then that's excellent as well. If perhaps you just do 10K of running a couple times a week or say 50 minutes of running, just make one of those sessions last time you do it on the Tuesday and just back it down to say 8K or perhaps 40 minutes. Right, so we're four days out from the race now on Wednesday, and that's a pretty good time to start thinking about giving your body a little bit of an MOT, some TLC, whatever you want to call it, and start thinking about getting yourself ready for race day. So a good thing to think about doing on that note is some stretching or even a massage, things that just start getting yourself a little bit loosened up and prepped for racing, really. But 
these two things you have to be careful with, especially if you don't do them so often because they can kind of shock the body in many ways, especially a really deep sort of stretching session. You need to be careful of that. You don't want to do that really close to the raise. And very much the same with a massage. As much as they can leave you feeling nice and relaxed, I've often found that the day after a massage, you can actually feel a little bit lethargic or even, dare I say it, a little bit worse than you thought you would because you're just getting everything out of the system and you don't want that to be happening the day before the race. So just be sure that you've given yourself a little bit of advance warning and that's why we think Wednesday is the best time to do that. Okay, so Mark and I are actually off to Frankfurt fairly early tomorrow morning, so that means we've got to get everything done and packed up by this evening. Thursday and Friday are often a fairly popular travelling day for events that aren't too far afield, so just be mindful of that when you're getting ready in this race week prior to heading away. And on that note, if you're riding today, then try and get that done nice and early because you need to leave time to pack the bike up, get all your kit done as well, so you're not running around stressed and getting hardly any sleep. It is also advisable not to get over ambitious with training that you're doing today. Don't do any crazy sessions because the last thing you want to do is get onto the flight tired, especially because these seats on planes are often really quite small and you can be all scrunched up. So just take things nice and easy today. Okay, so today is Thursday, which means travel day for us. And although we're not gonna give you a blow by blow account of how to get yourself to your race venue, we will talk about a few tips and things that we've learned over the years to just make it a little bit less stressful and means that you're just feeling a little bit more fresh when you get there. Now, in terms of getting to and from, say, an airport, if that's how you're traveling to your race, I always like to stop off at a service station. It's a bit like here, so leave a bit of extra time in your travel plan so you can do that to get out, have a little walk around, stretch, coffee or a drink of water or something, just to stop you being in that confined space of a car and a plane and a car for a long period of time. Now, another thing that you can maybe do, if it is a flight or a long train journey, say, or even a long car journey, is pop some compression socks on. Something that I've always liked to do. It really helps with keeping the blood flow in your legs especially and just makes you feel a little bit fresher when you get to the other end, I feel. So anyway, always done that when I'm racing. Yeah, now another thing that we advise with getting the legs flushed out is some light exercise when you get to where you're going. Now the simplest thing that we'd always suggest is say a 20 to 30 minute jog. I always used to like doing that because it's just really time efficient, easy to get out the door and feel like you've done something. If however you've got a bit of time when you get there, building up the bike is a nice idea too. Make sure you check that everything's okay of course, but get out and just do a nice simple high cadence spin. But whatever you do, run or bike, just make sure you start things off nice and easily so you can wake up your legs so to speak after that day of traveling. And finally, a curveball, I suppose, is you could actually treat this day of travel as a complete rest day. An awful lot of athletes do actually do that because they just feel like it's gonna be too much to try and squeeze into their day and they're gonna be on their feet for a long time. So they just like to take the day as a day off, a bit like we suggested for the Monday as well. Well, into Friday at these larger events such as this one, there can be quite a lot to do. We've got to register for the event, we've got our race briefing, and then not to mention the expo. Yeah, but it is really crucial that you remember what you're actually here for. Now, you obviously have to get registered. It's a pretty good idea to go along to the briefing as well. But you just want to limit how much time that you're spending on your feet. So as much as popping into the expo is a nice idea, just try not to traipse around in there all day long. Yeah, there can be a lot to do and there can be a lot of distractions for sure. Now, another thing you might want to throw into there is also a course recce. Now, that may be just cycling part of the course, probably not the whole course on Friday, or maybe even driving that whole course. Either way, just make sure that you stay well hydrated, well fueled, and stay out of the sun where possible. Um, but you definitely want to think about getting some training done on a Friday as well. And a little bit of everything's not a bad idea. There's often a swim recce today or possibly tomorrow. So you can have a look into that. And as Mark says, doing a little bit of biking and running and taking in the course as well is a great way of killing two birds with one stone. And then we are in to Saturday, which can be a bit of an admin day for these bigger and longer events. Yeah, absolutely. And at these events, most often you've got to be organized the day before because they usually require you to drop off your kit and most often your bike as well. So you just need to make the day before race day nice and organized so you're not getting yourself stressed and a little bit of a muddle before getting ready to race. Yeah, exactly. And depending on when those drop offs are or where they are throughout the day, I would really recommend trying to get some short last minute sessions in around that. Now I like to call these sort of leg sharpeners or openers. Uh, I personally don't like to do a swim the day before race day, but 
that is entirely personal, so do what works for you. However, I do like to get a bike in, which I normally try and do before all the drop-offs and obviously before the bike drop-off, and then a short run after all of that. Yeah, so a nice bike session that we both would like to do over, say, half Ironman or perhaps even for an Ironman as well is about 35 minutes in total, 15 minutes as a nice easy zone to warm up, high cadence would be good, and then into a main set effectively of three minutes, 70, 80% of your FTP. Last 30 seconds of that pushing above FTP. And then you've got a nice 10 minutes of active recovery into 30 seconds max, just to open up the pipes and warm your lungs up a little bit with five minutes of zone two warm down. Yeah, and that can be really easily adapted for different distances as well. And not forgetting, it's also just a really good opportunity to do those last minute checks over the bike to make sure everything is working okay before we then go to drop that bike off and all our bags. And then once we have done that, and that's all out of the way, I'd suggest just heading out for a really simple, just 20 minute jog. Finish that off with a couple of accelerations over around 50 to 60 meters, where you just build up to race pace and slightly above that. And that's just a really nice way of really waking the legs up, getting them feeling fresh, without putting too much stress on the body. Yep, and then we're into food time. You can start looking into getting a nice and early evening meal, Stick to things that you know, don't go wild and looking into trying the local cuisine. That's not the best time to try it the night before. Get all that done nice and early so you can get off to your bed in good time. And then it is time for race day. It sure is, and that means setting that alarm really early, I'm afraid, because you have to get up for that breakfast to be digested in advance of swim start. Good advice is often to be about three hours before, but that is an awful long time given how early our man starts. So as long as you're about two hours before, that should be enough to make sure whatever you've had is through your system before you get down to your swim start. Yeah, exactly. And then once all that's sorted, time to get yourself down to that race start and to do your thing. Now, you want to make sure you know exactly what you're doing, where you're going, what time you need to be in certain places, and also make sure that you have kit ready for after the race. Now also do make sure you get there with plenty of time because you probably want to put things like bottles on your bike, make some last minute preps, pump up your tires, all those sort of things. It is an awful lot of stuff to remember, but these are all crucial things for getting yourself nice and stress-free race day. Yeah, now obviously this is just sort of a general overview of some classic scenarios. There is no set cookie cut away or, or so to speak. So um, obviously th we've just come out to Frankfurt, we use this as an example, but we'd obviously love to hear from you guys to hear if you've got any suggestions for race day. So if you have any, please drop them in the comment section below. Indeed, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. So please hit that thumb up like button if you have. Find the globe on screen to get all the other videos that we do on GTN. And if you want to see a video that we did about how to run without getting tired, well, you can find that down there. Yeah, if you'd like to see our video on heart rate zones and how to use them, you can watch that by clicking just up here.